Buongiorno, good morning. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, invited again to this beautiful city of Genoa. Uh, and I'd like to uh, begin by saying how useful the uh, presentation so far have been in introducing the topic that I will broach, which is uh, the IMO uh, greenhouse uh, gas emission strategy. Uh, I think in uh, uh, due uh, as a follow up to uh, my uh, just the previous speaker, one could uh, maybe see some uh, positive uh, outcome of the document that uh, I will be uh, going through in the sense that it predates the uh, International Tribunal on the Law of the Seas. Uh, uh, advisory opinion by one year, and it's a revised strategy that uh, kind of uh, sets forth a path for addressing this issue. So, as you heard, uh, there is a background to the IMO GHG strategy. And that is found in the broad climate change treaties uh, that have already been uh, outlined, uh, including the UNFCC, the UN Framework uh, uh, Convention on Climate Change, the, uh, and its accessory uh, instruments, uh, including the Kyoto Protocol, the Paris Agreement, which was uh, signed in 2016, uh, covering climate change mitigation, adaptation, and finance. The Paris Agreement was negotiated by 196 parties uh, to the UNFCC. And I think one should uh, point out that uh, there have also been goodwill commitments um, including the uh, UN23 uh, Agenda for Sustainable Development, and particularly SDG 13, which reads, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Uh, one could also refer to uh, recent policy undertakings at the international level, uh, uh, that is the Glasgow Climate Pact at uh, COP26 and the Sharm el Sheikh Implementation Plan at COP27. In addition to this, uh, I think I would like to uh, just uh, uh, um, refer to the elements uh, identified by the IMO itself and as you know, the IMO is the specialized agency of the United Nations concerning international shipping. So the IMO, previously to the adoption of this revised strategy, uh, conducted uh, several studies. Uh, in 2014, it was uh, found out uh, by the IMO in its GHD study, the third of uh, study of, of the sequence, it estimated that uh, GHG emissions from international shipping in 2012, so two years ago, uh, sorry, 12 years ago, um, or 2012, that is, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, mathematically, I'm not very uh, good. Uh, so that, anyway, the uh, emissions from shipping accounted for some 2.2% of anthropogenic CO2 emissions, and that these emissions from shipping could grow by between 50 and 250 percent by 2050. Now, in a later a study conducted in 2020, so just uh, three years before the adoption of the revised uh, strategy, uh, these figures were somehow uh, updated or refreshed. So uh, it was found out that uh, emissions from shipping accounted for 2.89%, uh, so a slight increase in the decimals, and that uh, uh, by, uh, 
the, uh, that such emissions could represent between 90% and 130% of the 2008 emissions by 2050. So it's a lot, lot, lot of figures. Uh, uh, and I guess uh, it's all very good to show the, that there is that background of science that was conducted by IMO to substantiate the premise of its uh, um, policy formulation for the uh, uh, way forward. Okay, so uh, interestingly, uh, uh, we are in 2024. Uh, the strategy was adopted in 2023 as a revised document. Uh, one should point out that uh, the uh, work at the IMO regarding uh, greenhouse gas emissions was already highlighted in 1997 uh, in a conference resolution uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the conference that adopted Annex 6 to Marple on uh, air emissions from shipping. So there was already... Um, a resolution calling for the IMO to go further into greenhouse gas emissions reduction. Uh, 1997, that was. Now, in 2003, um, um, the IMO's highest body, the, re the Assembly, adopted a resolution, um, which is uh, referenced A963, urging the Marine Environment Protection Committee of the IMO to identify and develop the mechanisms needed to achieve the limitation or reduction of GHG emissions from international shipping. And then we, we come to uh, the initial strategy of 2018, um, uh, f following which uh, the revision occurred in 2023. Uh, and the full title of which is uh, IMO Strategy on Reduction of GHG Emission from Ships 2023, and it stands as a resolution of that uh, Marine Environment Protection Committee, uh, referenced 377, adopted in July of last year. Now, the, uh, what, what is entailed in this uh, strategy, which is a policy document after all, it's not a binding uh, international treaty, um, you will find that there are targets in it. Now, there is a vision, uh, and there are also principles, and I think it follows usually the, it, it follows the normal uh, or, or the, the, the generic uh, aspect of policy formulation. Uh, the vision is interesting. It says that, uh, I'm quoting here, IMO remains committed to reducing GHG emissions from international shipping. So there is that uh, 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 reiteration of the uh, undertaking on, uh, by IMO to continue uh, to address GHG emissions. Um, and it also says that as a matter of urgency, IMO aims to phase them out as soon as possible while promoting in the context of the strategy a just and equitable transition. And I mentioned some of the principles. These principles uh, relate to um, the precautionary approach, which is already addressed. And uh, they also re relate to the uh, common but differentiated responsibilities, emphasizing that for some countries, um, the means of achieving the uh, results are um, a, a more, more uh, available than for others, and that also the, uh, there is an impact from, uh, to, to, uh, from whatever other countries may do. So highlighting again the relevance of what ITLOS uh, found out in its uh, advisory opinion. Uh, there are so-called levels of ambition included in this G, uh, strategy. So this is quite uh, technical. Uh, there's four of them. 
So what are we uh, what are we talking about? I think it's uh, in, in terms of number one, um, uh, we 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 know that for new ships, uh, the IMO has signaled the need for the carbon I, uh, intensity to be reduced. So any new buildings have to have a uh, <laughs> Less less carbon intensity. That is the key technical term. Um, now, the second level of ambition relates to um, the uh, carbon intensity of international shipping. That's supposed to decline, or it's it is it is expected that that will decline as a whole. So the aim is to reduce CO two emissions per transport work as an average across international shipping by at least 40% 40, 40 by 2030 compared to 2008. There's another level of ambition, which is the uptake of zero or near zero GHG emission technologies, fuels and or energy sources to increase. And the fourth level of ambition is that GHE emissions from international shipping to reach net zero. So those are uh, arguably um, quite uh, ambitious. Uh, on the path to implementing these uh, goals, uh, the strategy includes uh, indicative checkpoints uh, to reach uh, the net zero GHG emissions from international shipping that I alluded to. So, um, so there are two checkpoints, in, uh, and the first one is that um, the there has to be a reduction of the total annual GHG emissions from international shipping by at least twenty percent, striving for. 30% by 2030 compared to 2008. And the second checkpoint is to reduce the total annual GHG emissions from international shipping by at least 70%, striving for 80% by 2040. So you see that it's a long-term um, uh, path towards 2050. Now, uh, as far as the basket of measures is concerned, uh, we have um, three types of uh, measures. That is short-term, mid-term, and long-term. And um, in terms of the uh, uh, short-term uh, measures, some of, the, some of these short-term measures have already been adopted by that. IMO or by the Marine Environment Protection Committee through amendments to MARPOL Annex 6. Um, mm. Turning to the midterm GHG reduction measures, these will have to be finalized as of 2025. So there is work ahead for the committee. And the dates of entry into force of all these uh, uh, measures will be delineated once they are adopted, depending on the type of measures. Um, and then it, there is a, a door op left open for further uh, midterm measures. Now, the midterm measures consist of both uh, technical and economic measures. So you can imagine that uh, improved technology, improved efficiency of ships will help to reduce uh, GHG, but also it will uh, have to be factored, factored in that financially it should be made more difficult to actually uh, emit GHG emissions. So um, the pricing mechanism is, is, has basically surfaced very neatly on the IMO agenda. And that has to be addressed in the coming uh, a few years of the work of this particular committee. Um, and then in, lastly, in terms of the long-term measures, uh, these could be measures that uh, will be finalized and agreed beyond 2030. 
uh, and they could be developed as part of a revision or of the uh, strategy itself, which will happen in 2028. Now, the impacts, uh, if I may say, uh, there are some certain impacts. Um, the uh, one should uh, refer to the uh, MEPC uh, uh, circular called Revised Procedure for Assessing Impacts on States of Candidate Measures. Uh, there is a focus on uh, the needs of developing countries, in, in particular least developing countries and uh, small island developing states. So it was those particular states that actually initiated the proceedings at ITLOS. So you see that uh, they have kind of a voice uh, on, on this uh, matter. Uh, once the comprehensive impact assessment is completed and uh, disproportionately negative impacts are uh, ad assessed and addressed, the measures may be considered for adoption. So these, uh, th there's a, therefore a built-in impact assessment review for these measures that will help reach the goals of the, uh, of the strategy. Now, uh, once a measure is adopted and enacted, the uh, committee of the IMO should keep its implementation and impacts under review upon request by member states so that any necessary adjustments may be made. Now, in terms of supportive actions uh, to help, in other words, the uh, international maritime community reach the goals set, uh, set out in the strategy, um, the strategy mentions facilitating public-private partnerships, information exchange, technical cooperation, particularly to least developing countries and uh, small island developing states, developing a seafarers training and skills program to support the reduction of GHG emissions from ships. Remember that after all, these ships are going to be operated by individuals who need to understand how to be more efficiently uh, eff uh, efficiently uh, energetic uh, or energy efficient. Uh, and uh, the strategy also calls for the initiation of research and development activities and pilots addressing marine propulsion, zero or near zero GHG emission technologies, fuels and or energy sources to further enhance um, the energy efficiency of ships and supporting the global availability and uptake of low carbon and zero carbon fuels and technologies. Now, uh, as I said, uh, the strategy is, does address the, its own implementation. Um, the, it, uh, at the time of its adoption, that is last year, um, already MAPC initiated a comprehensive impact assessment of the basket of candidate midterm measures. It also initiated phase three of the work plan on the development of midterm measures. In the spring of 2024, which just passed, uh, the same committee uh, launched its interim report of the comprehensive impact assessment of the basket of candidate midterm measures and finalize the basket of candidate midterm measures. In the autumn 2024 that's coming up, uh, that report of the comprehensive impact assessment of the basket of candidate measures will be finalized. What can we uh, expect uh, in 2024? Uh, we can expect the approval of candidate midterm measures and a review of the short-term measures to be completed by uh, 1st of January 2026. Um, also in uh, the autumn of 2025, uh, we can expect the adoption of further candidate midterm measures. Um, 2027, 16, that is 16 months after the adoption of the strategy that I'm uh, uh, outlining, the, the, the managers will enter into force. Now, finally, uh, in terms of it, 
the strategy's own review and revision. Um, we can expect in the summer of 2027 the initiation of the review of the 2023 IMO GHG strategy and uh, finalization of the review of the 22-23 IMO GHG strategy in the autumn of 2028, expecting therefore that there will be a revised strategy in 2028. That was my tour uh, d'horizon of the uh, strategy under consideration. Uh, I, I think I can rest it here as far as I'm concerned, so maybe expecting some uh, additional feedback. Thank you.